Hey guys, my name is Rachel and I am a hard surface modeling artist and I will be showing you how I made this little robot in Blender and rendered in Eevee. So we're gonna just start off with a basic block out. This character is just completely made up of cylinders and spheres. He is just very basic modeling techniques, very simplistic, cartoonish sort of robot. And that's sort of the style I was going for. Here I'm going to use a boolean on this chest piece right here. And I'm going to merge all these vertices together to get a very clean shape right there. And then I'm just going to knife cut across and add some more geo and bevel the top. And then we are going to add another boolean for the arm socket right here. And then I'm just gonna clean up all these faces and edges underneath. And I'm going to add in a solidify modifier and a mirror modifier using hard ops. And then I'm just going to put a bevel on top of it like that. So we're just going to mirror the arms across like this. And then we're just going to add in a sphere to be the ball joint. For this robot, I'm using mostly just ball joints because they are pretty simple to model. And for this character, I think they worked quite a bit. Here I'm doing some basic modeling to the chest and just beveling the edge like that. I'm going to duplicate the arms and position them to be the feet and then just scale them accordingly. I'm going to collapse some of these edges for the pelvis and then I'm going to use the box cutter add-on to add in some uh, fast boogans to angle the pelvis like this. And then I'm just going to collapse some vertices on the, on the leg like this. And then I'm just going to pull out the back edges and give it a nice curved bevel like this. So here I'm going to be working on the elbow piece, which is just a cylinder that I scaled out. And I'm just going to scale out the edges like this to give it some interest. Here I'm adding a boolean and I'm just going to cut it to be the socket for the arm. And I'm just going to extrude the faces upwards and give it a bevel. Now I'm going to add some edge detail to the arm. So now I'm going to be working on the spine of the robot. I'm just going to add in a cube and then I'm going to position it back and give it a nice curved bevel and then just bevel the edges like so. And then inset these faces and extrude them in. Now I'm going to be using a boolean to angle the legs to be the same angle as the pelvis. Now I'm just going to duplicate the arm down to be the same for the socket of the arm. So here I'm just adding in another boolean and here I'm going to be using hard ops to add in a cut right here. And this is going to be for our joint. And our joint is just going to be a little cylinder that we scaled down. And since it only has to move on one axis, then a cylinder works just fine. I'm going to refine this shape a bit more and create a socket with it for our ball. And that's going to be the shoulder of our robot. And that's going to be how he's going to be able to move. Just extruding the edge in to line up with the chest socket. So here I'm going to model out some simple pistons for the chest. I'm just going to take a cylinder, inset it, and extrude it down, and that will make a very simple piston. Adding some edge detail like this. So for the pelvis, I'm using box cutter again, just to get a very quick cut like that. And now I'm gonna be working on modeling the face of the robot and his round head. I'm just insetting these faces right here and I'm going to add in another sphere to be his glass eye. I'm gonna use the knife tool to cut out this shape and then extrude it inward for this little cheek detail. And then I'm going to mirror it across. Adding this little edge detail to his forehead. And now I'm just gonna add in a box and this is going to be his little hat sort of thing on his head. I'm going to add in a solidify modifier and then just tweak the shape a bit, adding some bevels to the corners.
So now I'm going to be working on the boots of the character. And for this, I'm just going to use a box that I add a subdivision surface modifier to. And it, I'm going to keep it pretty low poly because I want the subdivision surface to do, to just smoothen out the boot completely. I'm adding in an edge loop right here to define his heel. And then I'm just going to take this face, these faces right here, extrude them down for the sole of the bottom of the shoe. And this is just some very basic sub D modeling and it works pretty well. So for the hand, I'm going to just take a, a standard box and I'm going to add a bevel to it and then use box cutter to cut some shapes into the form. And then I'm going to use some cubes for the fingers as well. And then I'm going to use some cylinders for the knuckles of the fingers. And then just duplicating them across. Here I'm adding in some knuckles to the hands. And then I'm just going to duplicate the fingers over and make them a bit shorter and stubbier for the thumb. Just taking the cylinder over to be the joint for the thumb and then just inserting a the face like that. Here I'm going to be adding in a kneecap, which is just going to be a, a box that I put some edge loops and beveled. So here I'm going to go through the stage of parenting each object up its hierarchy. And the reason I do this is because I want to pose the character, but I don't want to rig it. So I'm just taking the tips of the fingers and then I'm going to parent them up to the tops of the fingers, which I'm going to parent up to the hand. And this will allow me to move all of the objects independently without a rig and making it easier, just really easy to pose. And for such a simple character like this, it works really well. So just moving up the hierarchy, parenting the forearm to the elbow, to the upper arm, to the shoulder, and then finally to the chest. And then I'm just going to take the arm and duplicate it across to be the other arm. So now I'm going to duplicate everything to the chest and then duplicate the chest down to the pelvis. Then I'm going to finish with the head as well. And then when I finish with the finish parenting all the legs, I will mirror them across like I did with the arms. So now I just set up a camera and I'm going to take each joint and rotate it around to get the pose that I want. And this pose I, th I feel like is very simple, but it works a lot for the character and just tells the story a bit more. I especially like his little head tilt right there. So now I'm going to create the jacket, which I start off with a cube that I add a subdivision surface modifier to, and then I extrude its faces outwards. And I'm just going to create this giant blocky sort of snake covering the entire model. And this is what I'll, I'll use to have a cloth simulation over our robot. And I'm just going to extrude these edges up to create the hoodie. So I'm going to select some of the main objects for the cloth simulation. And I'm just going to add a subdivision surface modifier to the cloth and add a cloth simulation to it and select the collection that the objects are in and then add a collision modifier to all those objects. Play the cloth simulation back and it fails horribly. There's a lot of pinching and a lot of inverted uh, just mess. I tweaked it a lot and it did not come out any better. So my solution was to create a sort of proxy object covering the entire model. And I'm just going to do that by taking a cylinder and extruding it out to create the general silhouette and shape of our robot. So once I have that arm modeled out as a proxy object, I play back the simulation and this is good enough result for me to continue with the rest of the proxy model. So I'm just going to add some cylinders and just union boolean them together. And it's going to be super, super messy, but this is just for the cloth simulation. So it can be, it can be this messy and it'll be fine as long as it produces a good cloth simulation result. 
So just working on the legs, adding in some cylinders and scaling them and extruding them down to cover the entirety of the model or just to be as close to the model as I can possibly get. So once that proxy object is done, I play back the cloth simulation and it works. So, but this cloth simulation is very silky and the rain jacket that I want to create is made out of harsh plastic. So I increase the tension, compression and all the stiffening options up on the cloth just to make it as strong of a cloth as I can. And that produces that plasticky feel that I was going after. And so here's the result. So I'm just going to apply the subdivision surface modifier in the cloth simulation. And I'm going to duplicate this seam right here. And then I'm going to go into sculpt mode and use the grab brush. And I'm just going to pull the cloth in along the robot's body because I did use an object that isn't the actual robot. So I want to make sure that the cloth is as close to the robot's object as possible and not just floating above it. I then add a solidify modifier to the cloth and that will help with the translucency. And then I just select the edge of the cloth and curve extract it, make it a curve object. And now I'm setting up some basic lighting in Eevee. So for this cloth object, we have to do some settings in Eevee to get the translucency to look correct. So we have to go into the main scene properties, turn on screen space refraction and screen space reflection. And then we go into shader and we add in a glass shader. And then we check screen space refraction in the material settings. And now that we can see that our material is truly translucent and see-through. So now I'm just going to set up a background and set up some more lighting. But we can see that this is, material is not very good. I feel like refraction depth helped a lot here. So I just cranked it all the way down. And that's because this cloth is supposed to be so thin that you can perfectly see underneath of it without it distorting the robot's body. So just setting up a color for the background and tweaking the lights a bit so that they look good. So I'm adding a glossy shader to the main shader and then I'm adding a Fresnel and just going to tweak it with a color ramp. So here I'm going to work on UV unwrapping because I wanted to add some ducts to the bottom row of the cloth. So I select the main UVs on the bottom and then I take this single face and I scale it along the X and Y in the UV space to be a perfect square. Then I select all of the UV grid and then I select that one square and then I UV unwrap by follow active quads. And that will give us this perfectly square grid and that will make our image project perfectly onto it. So now I can load up this uh, royalty-free Creative Commons duck vector and then just scale it up in the UV space and manipulate the UVs a bit so that the ducks fit perfectly on the cloth. Next, I'm going to add materials for all of the objects. And for these yellow boots, I add a yellow material with, with some low roughness. And then I also add a trim, a black trim for the rubber part. And then I add a glass shader for his eye right there. And then I'm going to add in another sphere for the emission. I'll make a yellow and then I'll turn on the roughness of the glass. I'll add in a glossy shader and then I will mix it with a Fresnel shader, and that will just create a nice little reflection of the light onto his eye. And now I'm going to add some materials to the rest of his body, just choosing some complementary colors like this gray and this, this orange for his inner eye. And then I'm just going to match up the rest of his body with these different colors, the orange and also some metal pieces for the joints. So just selecting all the objects one by one and assigning them all materials. So I'm just going to add some more material definition to his head by selecting some faces and then assigning it to that orange color. 
So for the jacket, I added a diffuse using the layer weight facing value to mix with the glass shader. And that, that effect turns out really well. It has diffuse on the very edges and it gives it more of a plasticky look. So now I'm gonna work on the, the raindrops and I'm just gonna use a glass shader for them. Check on screen based refraction for the shader. And now I'm going to use a gradient texture and I'm going to orient it so that it, the gradient is facing vertically. I'm going to use this gradient texture to mix between the glass and a transparent texture. And I'm going to change the blend mode of the material settings to alpha hashed. And so this will create the very top of the raindrop being transparent like this. And I think that's a very good effect for a raindrop. So now I'm just going to take these raindrops and I'm going to model them into the shapes of splashes. And just positioning them all across his hand. I'm going to take a splash and scale it down to be the base of the splash. Then I'm going to take this raindrop and I'm going to scale it down to be a little splash coming off the sides. And then I'm just going to duplicate the raindrops up. And then I'm going to add in a point light just above his face so it shines some more light on his face and adds a nice reflective light to his glass eye. And it just di directs some of the focus to his face again. And now I'm going to model out some simple buttons for his shirt. And that's about the end of this video. Yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more of this content, then please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys later.